Rising Stars. Chirongwa Chenye Chepamoyo bringing you all the best local content from within Zimbabwe right out to the world. I'm your host, my name is Nadia MTC, and today I'm joined by the beautiful Ayanda Candice. Not only is she Miss Albinism Zimbabwe 2019, but Miss University of Zimbabwe 2020. Help me to welcome the Queen herself, Ayanda Candice. Hi. <laughs> welcome to the studio, Ayanda. We're so happy to have Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. All right, okay, so I'm sure a lot of people want to know who's this chick, who's this Han, who is Miss Use It 2020, where was she hiding all along? But I think let's start from the very beginning. Uh, who are you as Ayanna Candice? Uh, okay, so my name is Ayanna Candice mm. I am 20 years of age and I'm a second year law student at the University of Zimbabwe. Okay. I was born and bred in Bulawayo. Okay, in Tombio, Kwa Bulawayo. Yes. <laughs> Am I saying it correct? From the city of Kings and Queens. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm a professional model. Uh, I can say award winning model now. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Congratulations on the recent um, Thank you award. so much. Thank you. Um, I'm also a humanitarian activist, okay. a girl advocate, and a motivational speaker. Okay. Wow. So she has a lot under her belt, and all this at the age of 20. Yes. Okay. All right. Where did your love for pageantry start? Um, at first, it was like. Because my first pageant was when I was in grade two. That was in two thousand and eight. Okay. Um, we had um, most students in primary school, and then I just like competed, like you know, like it was a fundraising thing. Okay. And my mom was like, "You should go." Okay. And I was like, "I need a nice, pretty, pretty dress." And then we got a nice dress, and then yeah, I competed. Then I was uh, crowned most potential junior because there was like most potential senior and most potential junior. So um, after that, it was like something I used to do like every year in primary school. Okay. And then high school, I forgot about pageants until 2017. Yeah, I watched Miss Universe 2017 and then South Africa was crowned uh, Miss Universe. And I was like, I used to love those things. And I was like to my mom, I want to do modeling again. She's like, no, but if you want to do it now, then you have to go professional. So I had to um, do modeling school for okay. yeah for about four months. Okay. And then I graduated, and then yeah. All right. So your mom has kind of been like your Chris Jenner. She's been pushing you into the limelight. Yeah, in a way. <laughs> yeah. Somehow, you know, like my mom is like the typical African parent. Mm -hmm. She before she supports you on a certain thing, she always have these questions like. Are you sure you want to do it? Uh, do you know that there are people who might say this and this and this and this and this? Do you know what happens in the modeling industry? You get the idea. Yeah. Although she has been like there every step of the way, she has always like at some point been like questionable about it. Okay. But yeah, she's been very supportive. Okay, that's great. So let's get into Miss Use It. Um, and you know, people don't really perhaps understand how big Miss Use It is. Yeah. So can you take us through you being crowned as Miss Use It and what happened afterwards? Because after the lights, after Nash TV was, you know, we finished watching on YouTube, wherever we're watching from. Now we don't know what, what has happened to our queen. And just take us through what happened afterwards. Who have you done shoots for? What's so exciting about finally, you know, walking out your ring? Um, first of all, I have to say it was a very tough uh, journey. Okay. Uh, we had eliminations every step of the way because like 50 students auditioned. Okay. Um, from different levels, uh, from part ones, part twos, part threes, part fours. Okay. And then they had to eliminate to twenty. Okay. And then from twenty it was fifteen. From fifteen then ten. The ten that you guys saw on the stage. Okay. Then from ten you had to see five and then top three. And then <laughs> Miss Sayanda Candice. <laughs> 
so it, 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 it was um it was really tough but then afterwards oh my god it was overwhelming mm -hmm. you know he had he had like because we had celebrities we had Enzo Aisha we had yes. Tanya the therapist mm -hmm. um we had Belinda Potts Miss um, Zimbabwe uh, we had Rick Chasers yes, yes the dead okay. dawn mm -hmm. so it was you had all those people coming to you and saying let's take a picture you know mm -hmm. it was really really huge um, and then after Miss Use It I got the opportunity to work with Rick Chasers for her summer collection was that a dream come true yeah it was <laughs> and it was something that was planned before Miss Use It but oh. then I just didn't I think like Miss Use It sold the door okay you know it was like okay I, I will reach out when you get to Harare and all of that. Mm. I wasn't sure it was going to happen, but then soon after Miss Use It, it was like, yo, are you still down to do the show? And I was like, yes, you know. Mm. Um, I got to work with Tate. I was okay. shooting for her today, and she like baked um, a cake for me for as a congratulatory okay. gift. Um, and Instagram blew up. Yes! Oh, yeah! If you need an influencer, I'm here. Yeah! yeah. Girl, yes, girl. So yeah, and I I, I received a lot of uh, attention from media. Okay. Yeah, good attention. Good obviously. Attention. Um, and I won female Austin model at the Blog Art Awards. But that was totally divorced, right, from from you being misused because you no. had been running for this. I, I had yeah, I had been running uh, for the BAA for a while. And when I was crowned Miss Use It, the voting platform was still oh, open. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, that's so I, I think that like after I, I was crowned Miss Use It and I still like kept on campaigning for the BAA, I think it, I had a new audience okay. now. So people really, really voted and they were so supportive. Right. I'm glad to say that we, we won. <laughs> Okay, so BAA, that's Blawayo Arts Awards, and you yes. were outstanding female model. model. Yes. Wow, at 20 years old, you were outstanding female model. And how long have you been in the game uh, professionally? I think it's three years, because I, I started in 2017. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, being a model, yes. and then being like a young lady who's living with albinism, right? Mm -hmm. And then also being an advocate for people living with disabilities and all of that. What kinds of challenges have you faced within the industry? And let's also talk about your height as a model, mm -hmm. and how has that affected you, uh, you know, rising? Um, I've only said that I have, I had two barriers to break, because I'm not the typical model. Okay. You, you know, when you look at the typical African model, she has to be tall, she has to be skinny, she has to be dark. Yeah. You know? I'm the exact opposite. I'm very light skinned, I'm very short, and I'm somehow curvy. Can I say I'm curvy? Yes, you're curvy! <laughs> <laughs> Represent! You know? <laughs> and the fact that in, when I got in the modeling industry, I didn't have someone to look up to. I didn't have someone who has albinism have walked my path, mm -hmm. you know. And although there was mass albinism uh, Zimbabwe in 2018, I was already in the modeling industry when it was established and everything. Okay, yeah. So I can safely say that I started way before there was Miss Albinism Zimbabwe. So I was trying to push my way into the industry okay. where you find a designer who's like, I didn't have you in mind when I was designing this collection. And at first I used to take it personally. Yeah. You know? I was very young and very passionate and wanting to get out there in the world. Okay. But then at the same time, I needed to understand that it takes passion. It takes you understanding that modeling is more than just a face. They're looking for a certain brand. And if you don't fit their brand, they won't take you. Okay. You know? So it was like that. And the fact that when I was looking for a modeling industry, I was rejected by four modeling agencies. Oh. Two in Bulawayo, two in Harare. Oh, okay. And you, you know, it wasn't like I... Some of them, it was a situation where I went personally. They were like, no, you're too short or, you know. Okay. And then others it was like I reached out online. And it was just like no, you know. Okay. So it was it was very very painful. And I think for a very young person it was really really painful. Yeah. But I'm glad that with when I found uh, more than just a modeling agency, I found a family that yeah. were willing to push me 
and also and also we're willing to hear what I want and the vision that I have is a model. Okay. And they've been so supportive. Oh, all right. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So that's powerful. Uh, rejection is redirection and you'll always find where you're supposed to be and I think that's exactly the case for Ms. Ayanda Candice. Yeah. Uh, Ayanda, could you take us into what your plans are from here and what what your platform, what you're going to use your platform for and you know, you now you're Miss Uze 2020, you were um, Miss Albinism in Zimbabwe 2019, right? Yeah. So what's next? What can we expect from you? Um. Well, I was supposed to give up my Miss Organism Zimbabwe title in May because that's when I was crowned in 2019. But then, unfortunately, or oh, should I say fortunately because of COVID, <laughs> I'm still the reigning queen, but yeah. um, they are crowning uh, my successor very soon. But before that, I'm supposed to travel to South Africa to crown the first Miss Dine, Miss um, Albinism South Africa, okay. which is something very huge and that I'm looking forward to. Uh, and in terms of my platform, I'm very passionate about young women. I'm very passionate about the rights of people living with disabilities. Yes. Because I don't want people to go through the same stuff that, through. that I went through. Yeah. So I want to be a, a pioneer of some sort and people yeah. like look up to me and like for for you know when when you grow up when you're growing up and you don't have someone to like look up to as hard. Yes. But I want to be that person where it's like I am this and this and this and this and this is where she is now. And I want to use my voice obviously to to voice about out about social issues that I'm very, mm -hmm. very passionate about. Um, which is something that I think I share with the Rotary Club because they are into charity work, they're into young women's rights yes. and, and all. Uh, and also I'm I'm running for Miss Zimbabwe at some point, I don't know <laughs> when. Yeah. You know, which is something it's something that I'm looking forward to but something that's gonna be hard because we have never had a Miss Zimbabwe this, this short. Okay. You know? Yeah. And my dream has always been to be a Miss Universe. Because watching Miss Universe is what got me where yeah. I am today. Or so it, it's something that I've always wanted for a very long time. And, and you I know what you that want. one day, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, you can be like, she said it on our show. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. she wants to be Miss Universe, yes. All right. But also I'm at law school and I'm trying to balance everything. Are you in hopes of one day becoming an advocate, practicing, or is it something that you're just getting a law degree for the sake of the law degree? I don't know if you guys are ever going to see me in court. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, yeah, you don't necessarily have to, but if someone has an, um, uh, an agency that you recently started, yeah. it's outstanding teen, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe you might use your law to help out models. And you know what I like about law is you get to learn about anything that is everything. Yes, you know, yeah. you, you get to have an insight of what's happening in the world and how things are run and everything. So I'm grateful to be in that yeah. kind of academia where you get to learn about everything. Okay. But obviously as someone who's passionate about women's rights and everything, I'm somehow going to be involved with that. Anyway. Yeah, but I, I want to be a business woman. <laughs> she wants to be a lot of things. All right, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, so that is Miss Ayanda Candice for you. Thank you so much, Ayanda, for coming through. And I think so a much. final word, what would you tell a young lady out there who's looking up to you and saying, I want to get into the modeling industry, but I don't have what it takes? Speak to them. Um, I subscribe to the teaching that I refuse to be defined by someone else really for what's possible. And I'm sure people watch my interviews and just like, okay. Because <laughs> it, it's something that has kept me going for a very long time. Okay. The moment you start defying what someone else has, like their concept and their idea that they have for you, which yes. doesn't align with what you have, then it's, it's, it's a stepping stone to somewhere, you know. Because you, you're going to meet people who are going to be very supportive of you, who yeah. push you um, day and night. But you're going to also meet people who are going to discourage you, like you have never had in one of your kind, you know? Yes. And that was the same thing with me, but then I, I pushed those 
ideas aside and looped um, forward, you know? Yeah. So refuse to be defined by someone else's beauty for first possible and you make it through, you know? All right, wise words from Ayanda Candice. This has been Rising Stars. Don't forget to like, to comment, to subscribe, to share, and just make sure you know you follow her on her socials. It's Ayanda Candice everywhere. Yes. All right, so I've been your host. My name is Nadia MTT, and this has been Rising Stars. Catch us next week, same time, same place. Goodbye for now.